Hi, welcome to Soulful Spinning, my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. Uh, this is a hand spun delights episode. It's a, tip, a typical podcast episode where I share with you my recent finished spins, my uh, projects that I've been knitting with my hand spun, uh, acquisitions and discoveries um, that are helping me to grow as a fiber artist. So hand spun delights is uh, that component of the whole Soulful Spinning channel. So my vision for the channel is that um, in addition to the Hand Spun Delight series, I might do product reviews, uh, spinning wheels, the fiber prep tools. This is Hand Spun Delights number three, and I have a lot to share with you today. It's been a couple of weeks since I did a, a podcast where I showed you a lot of my finished objects. So I've got some finished spins today. I've got some more experiments with hand dyeing uh, raw fiber. I have a completed art yarn project, which I'm super excited about. And I have some discoveries and acquisitions uh, that I'd like to talk to you about as well. Today is Saturday, August 18th, 2018, and I hope this finds you very well. And I'm so glad that you could spend some time with me today. So um, the first one, I, uh, the first I, uh, finished thing I want to talk to you about is this yarn here. So if you watched my last episode, um, my Northwoods episode, my Northwoods special edition, I was working on these um, fiber bats that I had prepared before I went up to the Northwoods. We go to the Western UP and we stay in a cabin and it's just absolutely beautiful. So this is a two ply from my bats that I had shown in the, the couple episodes ago. So they're on these, they're these short uh, hanks because I use my one yard nitty knotty because it's really portable. So I get these two pretty nice sized um, skeins, uh, hanks. These are two ply. The whole spin is about five ounces. And I'm sorry to say I have not counted my yardage yet. Uh, this has been washed and it has been finished. So I'm pretty excited about how it turned out. I would really, I'm trying to decide what to do with this. I just think this would be really cool woven up. So I don't know how to weave yet. So, <laughs> and, and at this time of the year, I'm not going to be learning. But uh, I had one last little bit on one spindle. And what I did there is I just wound it into a center pull ball on my ball winder. And I, I plied from the inside and the outside. So this one's got a lot more white in it. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It, it kind of reminds me of a rose garden. It's got some texture. It's got some mohair locks in it. It's got, it's mostly Polworth. I took undyed organic Polworth and then I had two different shades of organic Polworth from Briar Rose fibers and I had it in my stash and I drum carded it with a bunch of mohair locks and other I think mostly mohair locks and a little bit of sparkle. So that's my first finished spin. So if you have any ideas on what this should become, I'd love to hear your suggestions. So just you know, down in the doobly do below, if you could give me some suggestions again, or if you're a weaver, what do you think? It's it's pretty uh, firmly spun. It's it's worsted spun, and I tried to ply it fairly tight, tightly to make it a nice strong yarn. So that's the first one that I have finished. So, oh, this the second one I have. So the second, the second finished spin that I have is some. It was South Down. I believe it was a sixty-five percent British South Down and 35% Tussa Silk in the Black Cherry colorway from Ingle Nook Fibers. This had been sitting in my stash for a little while and I'm really trying to use up my fiber stash. I've got a lot of fiber and I just want to really process a lot of it so I can get more. <laughs> so, you know, you know how it is. I, I don't want to buy that much anymore because I've got so much in my stash. But um, I, I took this, it was a five ounces, and I spun this like super bulky two ply and 
I, I uh, spun it on my little gem. It wouldn't fit on the whole on one bobbin, even though I have the Wildflyer and the Jumbo bobbin. I think you can only get, it's supposed to hold six ounces, but I couldn't get the whole thing on the one bobbin. So I had to, uh, when I was, I had to spin it on two different different uh, bobbins. and But I what I did is I just um, magic knotted it together so that it's all one. So it's really, it really turned out nice. I I really like it. It's like two and a half to, th what's about three wraps per inch on my wraps per inch tool. So if you know about spinning at all, one way to measure the thickness of your yarn is to wrap it around an inch long space. Uh, like a, You can either do it around a ruler, there's special devices, you just wrap it around. And I got about three, about three wraps per inch for the most part. So it's a nice bulky, um, bulky spin. So I really, I really enjoy spinning bulky now. Um, when I first started spinning, I sort of took to long draw right away and sp spinning fairly fine and not always that consistent. I'm still not that consistent of a spinner, but I always, I like to knit with bulky yarn and it's so satisfying. You can, you can knit, uh, excuse me, you can spin something like this up super fast because it's so thick and this fiber was just perfect for that. It's just springy and elastic. It's got a lot of bulk, a lot of loft. And I don't know if you can tell, but if you, I mean, you can see, it's very, very, very springy. So this has not been washed or steam blocked uh, yet, but what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to make a pair of mittens. I know, everything's gonna become a mitten, right? <laughs> It seems like everything, I mean, that could become a mitten. <laughs> I know I have enough for that. <laughs> Anyways, um, what I'm going to, this is my plan. I'm going to take this yarn, which is, uh, this is some Cotswold locks that I hand dyed with violet and red dye. Yeah, in the dye pot. And I lock spun this and then spiral plied it. And it's kind of, it's kind of what, see, and I'm, I'm no, see, yeah, it's holding together pretty good. I was worried that the locks were going to come apart, but it's, it's holding, holding together quite a bit. I don't have very much of this, but it's, it's really, really thick. So I was thinking of taking this, it's lock spun and then spiral applied with some black uh, silk mm -hmm. and using this as a cuff for the mitten. So just, just as much, I think I'm going to just separate it into two equal pieces and then just knit as much of the cuff as possible with what I have and then just pick up with the regular yarn. And I think that would be kind of cute, you know, just having that little curly uh, right on the cuff of the mitten. So this was my hand dyed. Uh, my hand dyeing experiments, I've done three sessions of hand dyeing so far. and. Kind of with mixed results. I'm still having problems with the whole dye bath getting exhausted. It's kind of like a watch dye pot, never exhausts. And I think I'm going to have to start being a little bit more scientific with the pH. And I was watching a video by um, Namaste Farms, Natalie Redding, and she said it's got to be super, super hot when you put the dye in because that, that's when it strikes. So, and then I had to, I rinsed this a lot and washed it and soaked it. And there was a lot of residual dye in the water. So I have a lot to learn about hand dyeing, but I figure this is a safe bet because even if it runs, it's gonna run into this other burgundy color and it won't mess, make a mistake, um, make a mess of a project. Like I would never ever put this on the cup of a white mitten at this point because I have a feeling that would be a disaster when it got wet. So if you have any suggestions or resources that, that you have used, I do have some books on hand dyeing. I just, uh, just very inexperienced with the whole process and, but it's still a lot of fun. So. Today is a beautiful uh, day. It's um, kind of overcast. It's about 80 degrees. 
and I just had this unexpected uh, time. Uh, my boys went out, my husband and my son went out to work out, leaving me the house to podcast because for some reason I can't record when they're home. <laughs> just, I'm just too shy. I don't know what it is. It's like, so. All right, next up on my uh, finished spins is this one. I've got a lot, I've got a lot of spinning. Uh, one of the things I'm finding is making art yarn or thicker yarns, you just, you, you know, you just churn these uh, skeins out really, really quickly. So this was a core spin that I did. This is, I hope the colors are showing here. I'm gonna get a little close to the camera and get my face out of the frame. This is a hilltop cloud spin. I have the I have the tag right here. I've had this in my stash for a couple of years. And as a matter of fact, I don't think Katie uh, Katie Weston is the is the beautiful and wonderful dyer behind uh, Hilltop Cloud. I don't think she does. Uh, sells fiber bats anymore but uh, I had had this in my stash for quite a while and I core spun this on this so this is a mohair nylon blend from Igea Astro on eBay and it was 100 grams and a thousand meters and it was like I want to say maybe $15 for the whole cone so I was on Etsy looking for mohair as for a core because that's when they say you always it's a safe bet to use as a core because it's grabby so I found this I got a lavender and this just happened to be the same color as this but this is a nice medium shade and so I bought two others I bought the white, uh, a white one, and then I also bought <laughs> I also bought a, a gray one. So for my core spinning, I thought I thought these three together will give me a lot of options, and I think the the lavender will be more like a medium shade and will blend in. Fine with like any kind of medium color that I'm going to do a core spinning. So I've got those three, and they were like you said, they were very reasonable. I'll I'll put a link below, so if you're interested in, in checking her out, it was really cool too because in the label it says um, prepared for, and it has my name on here. So I thought that was pretty neat. So anyway, I um, I core spun again on my little gem, and then I. Spiral plied with some silk thread, uh, silk throw, silk sewing thread <laughs> that I have in my stash. And this, I know what I want to do with this. I'm going to make a a little uh, neck warmer. Real, real close, kind of close to the neck. It's so soft. It has zero itch. It's not itchy at all. And I'm going to make a little cowl for uh, around my neck. See, somebody on, I've been posting a lot of my pictures on uh, on Instagram and somebody says, well, what are you gonna make with that? And I said, well, yeah, I know I really need to start knitting with my hands spun. She goes, she goes, yeah, I, I, I just have mine is just sitting in the closet and it looks pretty. and. And then I said, yeah, I'll have to cake mine up and knit something. She goes, oh, I've done that too, and it's still sitting there. And, and I, uh, I kind of took that as a challenge to say, to think, well, I'm going to go ahead and make something with my yarn. <laughs> I mean, it really sort of got me thinking, like, I don't want it to just sit there and look pretty. I want to actually do something with it. So um, I, I'm going to, this is the next hand spun and I and I'm really just thinking um, accessories uh, accessories are perfect for this kind of thing 
Uh, they don't use a lot of yarn and, excuse me, got fuzzies. Um, and they're quick to knit when you knit real bulky. I was at Joann's uh, craft store, as you all probably know all about Joann's, and on the end cap they had some hand spun yarn from Knit Collage, and it was uh, thick and thin, different colors. Uh, one of the one of the skeins had little uh, like daisies in it. It's su super cool looking, and I was studying it, and I really got inspired to to think, well, I could make that because they wanted $36, which is probably really cheap for a, a, a skein of hand spun. So I, uh, the, the girl that runs, or the, the woman that runs Nicolage goes to India, and I guess she's trained um, some women there to spin these beautiful, these beautiful hand spuns. And, and she's got lots of ideas, too, on what you can do with the yarn and how you can incorporate it into different projects. And that just kind of inspired me to, uh, to make a skein which is the next one I wanted to talk about. Now the yarn has already been knitted up. Haha, <laughs> aren't I great? <laughs> I actually made the yarn and I steamed it with my iron and I cast it on right away because, as I said, I was really thinking I really need to make something out of my hand spun. So, and again, I, if you follow me on Instagram, you know how I'll Every podcaster says that, right? And I always think, no, I'm not following you on Instagram. Show me what you got, right? Um, so this is the scarf that I made. I don't know if the colors are probably going to be. It is this bright. <laughs> I got some pink fiber from Dakota Carding and Wool. It's like mohair, Firestar. Uh, I think some long wool. I can't remember the exact makeup of it and I made a skein of yarn I mixed it with um, plain uh, organic Polworth kid mohair locks I put ribbons and beads in the yarn and I made this I made this scarf so let me, let me show you. So it's, this is a mohair. This is kid mohair that I had spun, core spun, and spiral plied. And then this is the yarn. And I was at Joann's and I bought these little, I bought these little ribbon, these little roses, you see. If you could see that little rose uh, in the trim section. And I had some lime green mohair. And then I put beads in there. And I'll, I'm going to talk to you about the what I used, can you, uh, what technique I used. But I don't know, the beads don't always show up on the camera here. So I didn't have a lot of the pink and white yarn. This was all one skein. But I had another skein that I had spun up earlier this summer that I've talked about, I think, in one of my first episodes. And it's this... Uh, this one right here. So what I did is I I striped it and then I did the middle section with this green and then I picked up the the pink again striped it with a little green and then went back. I love these little the thick and thin bits from the Polworth. They're so fun. And I put Shaworski Elements Crystal Beads in here yeah, you might not be able to see it really well. And then I put some Miyuki, uh, Miyuki crystal beads and then some check beads that I had. You know, from Joann's they sell these check beads that are crystal beads. So I made this scarf. I'm calling this my boho chic scarf because it kind of reminds me of that boho chic look, um, the color scheme, and just the sort of artsy nature of the piece. And... I think um, it's long enough to double. I think I'm going to give this to somebody as a gift. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I'm thinking some one of my nieces maybe, like a you know a young cute girl. I think this would really be really cute. You know, maybe a young teenager 
I've got some nieces and nephews. There's well, they're not teenagers yet, but they're getting there. And I thought maybe they would enjoy something kind of like this with the roses and the. And then the other thing I did is I I got this metallic ribbon. And I spun that in the in the scarf as, in the yarn as well. So this was just a lot of fun to make, and it's just it's just kind of a fun feminine kind of piece that I, it was just really a lot of fun to make. So yeah, super, super thrilled that I spun the yarn and I cast it on. It was like, you go girl, right? <laughs> All right, so let's see what else I've got here. So that was my finished um, project there. I, I, sorry, this, uh, I'm trying to speed it up a little bit here because I know you don't have unlimited time to watch me talk about all my spins, but so also earlier this summer, I had, um, drum carded two bats in complementary shades and I had spun them up and they were just sitting on the bobbin. And then when I picked up some metallic thread, I spiral plied them. So I'm going to get up and show you a little bit closer what they look like. Actually, these there are two of them. There's this one. Kind of an oceany, greeny blue with pops of orange and pink silk. I threw in some pink silk and mohair. I think I have a little bit of video of what the bats look like before spinning that I'll insert here. But I was happy with how this turned out as my spiral ply. And then the second one is this one. So this one is that sort of brick red color. And, when I, and what I did is I interspersed some of the same blue colors from the other bat here. And I also put some brown alpaca in there. And so I have these two these two skeins that really are complementary and made for each other. So this I'm going to make a scarf with this. I just haven't decided how I want to knit it. I, I was thinking of knitting it long ways, like casting on enough stitches that would give me five feet, something like that, and then just going back and forth, striping the colors and then maybe using the ends as fringe. 
uh, or I might just do a traditional stripe. I'm not really sure. I have a pattern for like a bias knit scarf that uh, I think would be nice. I just I don't I hate to do stripes where I have to cut and then weave in the ends, um, especially when it's hand spun and I don't have a lot of it. So that stay tuned for that one. I definitely am going to knit this up into something also. But I was happy with how this came out. I love the colors. I, I think it's just really, really pretty. So somewhere along the line I became a, a art yarn spinner or novelty yarn spinner. It just sort of happened. And it just I just love it so much. I just possibilities are endless. So So let's see what else I got here. So the next thing I want to talk, oh, I got one more spin. <laughs> What's this one? So there's a hand dyer, I think she lives in Vermont. Her name's Beth Ann Elian, or Elian, and her, the name of her shop is uh, Allons-y Fiber Arts. And I've been a longtime customer of hers. I haven't purchased anything from her lately, but uh, way back, like when she just, I think when she just first had her Etsy shop, I had bought some blending fibers and some, some fiber from her. And then now she's just a really very pretty big independent dyer who's moved away from Etsy and now has her own shop. So I'll go ahead and uh, link her information below. Alonzi Fiber Arts. And she, she's, I don't know how she does it. Her, her fiber is so beautifully prepped. She, she has these insane, beautiful colors, and the fiber is never compacted. She just must be very meticulous about how she hand paints this, the, the fiber, and um, just, just beautiful, beautiful work. I have quite a lot of her fiber in my stash, and I'm telling myself as soon as I spin it all up, I can buy some more, because she now is importing this um, Hao Nui uh, fiber from New Zealand. It's, it's like it's just like this own breed. And it's supposed to be amazing fiber and I'm just dying to try it, but I'm showing restraint because I have I can have my own little fiber festival here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this weekend is the Michigan Fiber Festival in Allegan County, Michigan, which is probably about a two, two and a half hour drive for me. And I really thought that I was going to go. And then I thought, you know, go oh, because I could meet, you know, some people and make some connections. And, and then I was like, who am I kidding? I'm just going to buy more stuff. And I have too much stuff. I know it's a pro. I, I just have way too much fiber. As a matter of fact, I was upstairs looking for some yarn for a, a hat. My brother has requested a hand knit hat, which I'm like, he actually wants, he keeps bugging me. Are you going to make me a hat? So I'm going upstairs. I have an extra room and all my fibers in there. And it's like, Oh my God, I'm like, oh, I bought this at Michigan Fiber Festival three years ago and I still haven't used it. I don't know if you're, you're like that at all, but you know, you go to these events and you haven't even used what you had purchased before. I don't know, maybe all of a sudden I'm becoming more reasonable. <laughs> Probably not, but um, you know, just yeah, I mean, it's like I have a warehouse of fiber here. It's just sort of a, it's crazy. I just have too much. So that's why I'm really, this spinning thick and thin and art, and it's gonna go, hopefully it'll go faster and I'll be able to uh, process some of this. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, I was speaking, I, I bought a JC Boggs class spin art and she has a technique of spinning thick and thin, and it's the idea of spinning a consistent thick and thin. And it's a lot harder than I realized to, to be to, to be consistent to have to have the thick parts as thick as you want and the skinny parts to be as skinny as you want. I think it's going to take a lot of practice. But uh, as I I started out with the yellow here, kind of this yellow green. And some of the parts turned out just like I really like how it turned out. But then I have like super skinny, super skinny parts. This was uh, what was first on my bobbin. And so it's inconsistently thick and thin. I don't know if you can see 
see it here. Then when I got to the darker shades, I started getting better. Uh, and so and some of the some of the thick parts came out really like super super cool. Like I dig this. I totally dig this. There's a pattern on Ravelry. Somebody made a cowl with this, just a stock in it cowl with a thick and thin. Like I love that spiral, that fun spiral in there. So this really uh, turned out pretty nice, kind of more what I was going for. So I got better at it as I progressed. So I'm kind of worried that when I knit this together in a single project, the gauge is gonna be so wildly different. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I was thinking, well, maybe I could double this up. The skinnier parts I could double. And then just use this as single. Um, this is beautiful fiber. Targi is really uh, very, very squishy and it's got a lot of bulk. When you take a Targi braid out of its bag, like if it's in a zippy bag and you take it out, it just like poofs, you know, it poofs all out. Kind of reminds me of Rambouillet. It's just very, very lofty and uh, elastic. So yeah, so I've been really busy this, this past summer with my yarn. So I hope you're getting a good look at this. It's my little show and tell here. <laughs> Really, isn't that what a podcast is all about, a show and tell? I just find inspiration in other people's podcasts, and, you know, I hope I give a little inspiration in mine as well. So that was yet another spin. Now, I think that is it for all my spins. So uh, the last piece I want to talk about is discoveries and acquisitions. So for my boho chic scarf, I utilized a technique that I learned from uh, Anita, also known as Pinky Punky on Instagram and uh, Ravelry and YouTube. She is a, an amazing fiber artist who lives in the UK, and she's so generous with her knowledge. She has a lot of videos on YouTube that are free that I've learned so much from. And uh, we had talked and kind of communicated a little bit on YouTube, and I ended up um, getting a, a hold of her color. She has a tutorial that she sells on Etsy all about color, and she's just she's been trained as an artist and really knows how colors work, and I highly recommend that video. And then I also bought her video on beading, which she shows you a couple of techniques how you can spin your um, beads into your yarn, and that's what I used for my... Uh, my boho chic scarf and I just I love looking at her Instagram feed I love looking at her Etsy shop and you know, I'm always zooming in on her yarns they're they're so very unique she she just she's just amazing I, I I only wish that I could you know someday I will get to spin things that that would be on par with what she what she spins. It's just really, really nice stuff. So I would highly recommend her two videos on colors and beads. Uh, she also, unbeknownst to her, has enabled me to order some uh, long tease water locks and some Masham, or is it Massam, locks from the UK. I just received it today. And I got some tease water and some, I think it's Masham. And I got some first clip Tease water and some first clip masham, which I'm going to show you. I've washed just a single lock from each of the bags and I'm uh, cold soaking it right now. This is the masham that I received and still wet, it's still a little bit wet, it's quite long. And then, um, as I, I got some, some of this tease water, this is, I don't know if you can't really tell what it looks like too much from this tiny little lock, but um, what it, it comes in this. Each lock is very, very thin and very, very fine. And it is so soft. Here, I'll fold it in half so you can see it a little bit better. Get out of the frame here. <laughs> it, I don't know, I think it rivals mohair, the first clip. 
tease water. I hope I don't mess it up. I'm kind of worried now. <laughs> but uh, I just rinsed this uh, in a little soapy water and laid it out to dry. And um, it's beautiful. It is really beautiful. She says that American teas water is not the same as British teas water. Uh, they can't bring teas water use into the U.S., but they can use artificial. Well, they can get semen for from teas water rams from the U.K. and then you you upbreed them in this process, so you get you know, a fish supposedly like a teas water that's like 97% teas water. But I think there's also that has something to do with where where they live, what they eat and so forth. So I just I really wanted the genuine article, so to speak. So um, I can't wait to do something with this. I got 900 I got 900 um, grams, which is about two pounds. I think it's because a kilogram is a thousand a thousand grams is about 2.2 pounds. So I have about two pounds, but it is was raw and it was dirty. It's dirty. Uh, it's not very greasy, but there there is dirt and you know, it's a sheep, so it lives you know lives outside and it's dirty and. Um, I'll be posting some pictures on Instagram of what it looks like before and what it looks like after washing, and uh, share with you some of my progress with its uh, processing um, in between now and the next and the next podcast. So. My husband says, make sure you label because you might get them mixed up. I'm like, there is no way I'm going to get mash them mixed up with teas water. They're to I mean, they're similar. They're 9 to 12 inches, I think, in length. But the, the, the teas water is so, so fine and so white. There's like, I did get some, I believe I have some teas water in my stash from somebody, uh, a lady in Michigan, American teas water. And it, it's it's not like first clip or anything. And I think that it's about a six or seven inch staple. And it's a little, it's got a bit of canary stain, like yellow stain. And it's not as nearly as soft as this. It's probably not a lamb's fleece either, but it was really, really expensive. So even with shipping from the UK, it was a way more affordable than some of the American teas water that you can get here. So I'm really excited to dye and spin up some of this beautiful fiber. And like I said, I hope I don't, you know, I hope I don't mess it up. I would just, I don't work in very minute quantities. <laughs> so, so if I mess up, I mess up just a little bit. So that's that. So that's my teas water and my meshum. I mean, my husband says, you've been wax poetic about sheep all day long. I know. Speaking of sheep. Uh, you probably guys know about Jenny and Devin. They used to have a podcast, uh, Wool, Handmade in Woolen. Uh, Jenny is Tiny Paper fo uh, Studio, Tiny, Tiny Paper Foxes, and they have five sheep now, four girls and a boy. And uh, our house barn life on Instagram, they're they're so much fun to listen to and watch, and they're it's 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 like they're living the dream of having sheep right <laughs> anyways yeah it's pretty exciting so let's see let me just check my notes here so I got a couple of new green sleeve spindles I'm gonna stop right here and go grab them so Elizabeth Daly is the uh, maker I think her and her husband are both wood turners they're the owners and um, you know geniuses behind green sleeve spindles and look at these two beauties they gorgeous. So when I was up north, I was spinning with one of her. Oh, now I can't remember the name of this variety. Lady Catherine. I think they're called Lady Catherine. I think it's part of her Tudor collection. So she is such a nice lady. Um, if you're interested in a spindle from uh, from Elizabeth, what I suggest you do is look at her website, look at her Facebook page. She's got a lot of pictures of. Actually, uh, Facebook's a great way to contact her, but you could look at her videos, or not her videos, her um, pictures on Facebook, and you can see a lot of her work. And if you're interested in a particular spindle, you just contact her and tell her, you know, I'd like a Catherine's Cup, or I want a uh, Maureen's uh, Molinar. And she'll talk, tell you about what kind of woods that she has in stock and what she's been working on, and she will work with you and give you the custom make your spindle just for you. So, 
I had ordered, uh, I think it was, this is holly and then wangy wood or wanga wood around the mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's, um, I don't know what the shafts are. So I ordered this spindle, right? Mm -hmm. So I come back from vacation and I go get my mail and there was a second one in there. She, she gave me this one too. This is a uh, maple and uh, again, plum wangy, I think she called it around the, around the rim. Uh, I have purchased a lot of spindles from her. And as a matter of fact, as part of the Soulful Spinning channel, I do want to eventually make some videos and just focus on certain spindle makers. So I'd like to get all of her spindles together and just talk about the different types that she has. I, I don't have, obviously I don't have every type that she makes, but she makes a lot of wide variety of styles and most of them are very, very lightweight. She has a couple uh, beginner spindles. One's called the Bare Bonesy and the other one is called uh, the Apprentice Spindle. I think I have the Apprentice Spindle. So uh, look for a video upcoming not real soon, but I'm going to, I think she's going to be my first spindle maker that I showcase and just show you all the spindles that I have uh, of hers and just kind of give you a, give you an idea of what her spindles look like in action. Isn't that pretty? That's maple on the inside. I think I mentioned that already. So super, super nice. I just love a beautiful spindle. So, but those were a lot of fun. So I got those. And, uh, and then, of course, I got the Cohen mohair. Those were a couple of my acquisitions. And then when I was up north, we stop at a, a my husband always said, you want to stop at the yarn shop. And we always stop at this place called Sutter's Gold and Fleece. And it's in St. Germain, Wisconsin. I don't get there every year, but he says, do you want to stop anywhere? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll stop. So we walked into that uh, yarn shop. It's, it's a yarn shop, but um, there she had some mohair, some mohair for sale. So I bought this beautiful, I bought four ounces of this absolutely beautiful kid mohair. I love mohair. It's so beautiful. And it's so, it's so nice to lock spin. It's so fun. So I got this gray. It's kind of looking brown here, but it's a real beautiful, beautiful silvery gray. So I got four ounces of that, and then I also picked up this, these wool locks, hand dyed wool cloud with locks from interlacements. Hopefully you can see that. And it's three and a half ounces of this gorgeousness. It's just some sort of random, um, I'm not sure what it is. It could be Border Lester, it could be Romney. I mean, it's got some beautiful, beautiful locks here. So I'm going to tail, I'm going to spin this up. I know, I could, I could have dyed my own locks for my own fiber, but um, it was only $10.00 which I thought was a really good deal for hand, uh, hand dyed, uh, hand dyed locks. It's a cloud. And again, this will be, this will be lock spun um, soon on my wheel. So I got that. I've been pretty good about my purchases. I haven't bought a ton of new stuff because as I was uh, talking about before, I, I have a lot of stuff, you know, so I don't really need to buy very much. Um, so the other thing I bought was from Webs. I had ordered some, I ordered a cone of this Tencel, 100% Tencel in a natural color. It's made in Canada. And it's this huge, uh, white, not too exciting um, cone. I think a lot of people use this in weaving. I was watching uh, a YouTube channel, Merla Fiber Arts, I think it is. She hasn't put any videos out, uh, videos out of late, but uh, she was saying that she uses this Tencel for a core. And, uh, you know, I had read that mohair is the way to go. Um, 
Esther Rogers of JS Turtle Creations. She uses uh, number 10 crochet cotton. But uh, this lady from Merla Fiber Art said that she really liked Tencel. And um, when I bought it and I got it in the mail, it really does actually have, it has some texture to it. It's a two ply and it's got a little, it does have a little bit of tooth. And it was a uh, very reasonably priced, it was on sale. So I bought this for my core spinning. And then, um, I'm knitting, uh, I'm knitting. I'm, <laughs> sorry, I'm, um, I'm drinking my uh, afternoon coffee out of the Scottish Blackface Emma Bridgewater mug that I got for Christmas. Uh, so, as I was saying, I ordered from Webbs and I had these two, they had a pretty good sale, I bought these two cones of silk. This is uh, 2 slash 60. It's Hasegawa Company, it's a Japanese silk thread. So I got a, it's really, really, really thin. It's just a little thicker than the silk thread I've been using, or the sewing thread, but it is, like, it's super, super strong. And I, I really wanted something like this so I could spiral ply and not be worried about my, uh, my yarn. You know, I wanted it to have integrity. But I, I really, I do suggest you guys, if you're interested in buying any silks, check out eBay because there are some sellers on eBay that sell some really good Japanese silk and Italian, also Italian yarns that, that are great for art yarn. Because you know, with art yarn, you're going to use a lot of it and it's going to be incorporated into other projects. So so now I'm, I've, I've got quite a bit of cones. I, I need some way to uh, display it over here by my work area. Um, but I could see this is why you, um, the cone yarn really is helpful when you're a, when you're a fiber, or when you're doing more art yarn type of, de type of things. So yeah, that's, that's about, uh, all that I have for my making. I, I did cart up a bunch more, uh, fiber bats, uh, right before I went on vacation, which I'll show you real quickly. This is... This is uh, Finn Lamb and Polworth and Silk. This is all in a, this is my bat here. So I've got three of these. This is one that I started already. It's got uh, Finn Lamb. It's a real, real dark brown. It's almost, almost black, but not quite. And I've got all these that I carted up. So of course I brought these with me on my vacation and thought, well, if I run out of fiber, I can spin these. So this is next. I've been spinning some of this on my spindle. And um, I think I'm going to spin this just regular thin, you know, like a, a fingering weight, and uh, see what happens. But uh, who knows? I might end up core spinning some of this too. Excuse me. When you deal with fiber, you're used to it, uh, getting a little bit fuzzy. Oh, all my fiber podcasts go, excuse me, I have fiber in my nose. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So that's, oh, what else is upcoming? Um, so the other thing I, is, like I said, I've been going through a lot of my uh, fiber stash, and I found this, these fiber bats from Ingle Nook Fiber. Everybody knows about Ingle Nook Fiber. And this is an Angora, a Merino Angora bamboo, full cashmere, and a bunch of other stuff. And this has been sitting in my stash for a while also. And, excuse me, I'm sitting on my spinning stool, which is quite small. Uh, this, I, I spun some of it up on my Turkish spindle. And here it is spun up cover up my head here. But now that I've learned how to core spin, and I've got Angora Bunny uh, bats just flying all over the place. Um, well, with the rest of this, I am going to core spin this. Yep. I think it'll be perfect. 
and it's going to be a big, fluffy, gorgeous skein of yarn. Core spinning is really great to showcase the, the nature of the fibers and just to keep it, when you core spin, the yarn still has the feel of the bat before it was spun up, which is super cool and uh, neat. So that's next up on my wheel. So on a sadder note, um, one of my favorite spindle makers passed away this summer, uh, Wayne K. Parr from Natural Knot Wood. Evidently he died suddenly in July. I had uh, seen a post on Instagram, somebody had gifted a K. Parr spindle to uh, one of the gentlemen on Instagram and it was so beautiful. And even though I have five of his spindles, I thought, well, I'm gonna go and check out a shop and I noticed he didn't have any spindles, and I thought, oh, he must be just really super popular. And, and then I checked again, and then Kelly, his, his uh, daughter, had posted that uh, Wayne K. Parr, his, her dad, had passed away suddenly in July, like third week in July. And it was like a shock, you know? So, you know, somebody that, you know, he made this spindle right here. And, um, I mean, no more. There would be no more uh, of these spindles. Um, ever again and uh, a lot of people in the fiber community have lost loved ones and my heart goes out to all of them and uh, you know we've all at, you know you get to a certain age and you do lose people um, you know parents and um, but we only have so many so many days so many years to do, to be what, to make, to, to live the life we want to live. And, you know, being a fiber artist and working with uh, being a maker is a huge part of who I am. And I know it is to all you guys too out there. Well, I think that's all for today. Um, I see that my men are coming home. I see them coming in the, uh, in the driveway now. So I will sign off. I hope you guys are all very well. I hope to see you very soon. And please be well, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.